Knights of the East, Knights of the West, prepare! Picking minute. I am a witness to the heroic epic event of Sir Gullivant, the famous knight. And Clyde, the famous warhorse. And that terrible, terrible monster. Yeah. Abulient, intrepidating. These are the terms that describe my story, but will you hear it? Will you hear my story? Yes. Well, attend, I beseech you, while I share with you a very famous book by Bill Peet called Cowardly Clyde. Now, boys and girls, this is a rather scary story. So you better hold your seats or your carpet or whatever you're sitting on because it's scary. Once there was a brave young knight known as Sir Gullivant who rode around on his great white war horse shouting, Bring on the fire-breathing dragons! Bring on the ogres! Bring on the trolls! I'll clobber them, I will! Now all this shouting was most upsetting to Clyde, the great war horse. He wasn't the least bit brave, and he worried about what would happen if Sir Gullivant actually met up with one of these terrible, terrible monsters. Now Clyde didn't want anyone to know that he was actually a coward, so he pretended not to be by prancing around with his chest out and his nose high in the air. But this didn't fool the farm dogs. No, they could spot a coward from a mile away. They had great fun in teasing the old horse, barking and growling at him. <laughs> Waiting for him to twitch an ear or bat an eye. Clyde was so skittish that in fact, a silly old scarecrow gave him the creeps. And when he heard that it was a great big giant ogre on the loose, he was most terrified. Now, this monster always attacked in the middle of the night, kicking down barn doors and ripping off rooftops. It was a time of terror for the farmers and their families. And because they had no way of fighting off the huge beast, you know what they had to do? They had to leave their homes and set for some faraway place. In their hundreds, they scurried on down the road, taking with them their absolute necessities. But then came along Sir Gullivant, shouting, Here, here, no need to panic. Don't lose your heads. I'll throttle the monster to thrice. I'll finish it before tea time, I will. Ha! He thinks it's easy. No, no, it's not that easy, warned an old farmer. I, I got a peek of the monster last night. He's a whooper of a thing, an owl-eyed oxidated ogre, uh, nearly as big as a barn. They say that he lives in the forest north of here and that he comes out only at nighttime. And anyone who would dare to go in after him, well, a dimwitted fool he must be. Well, then a dimwitted fool I must be, for I'm off to meet the ogre right now. Let's go, Clyde, giddy up, giddy up. And off they went, galloping northward across the cow pastures. But as they were galloping along, of course, Clyde the horse was hoping they would not meet with the monster. Remember, he's a coward. He doesn't want anyone to believe that, that, that he's an actual coward. But he's a coward. Well, much to the horse's dismay, Soon they came across a barn with a ripped off rooftop. And get this, boys and girls, get this. All around the barn were these two toed tracks of something very, very, very big. 
must be a whooper of a thing, explained Sir Gullivan. With tracks like these, we'll catch up with the brute in no time. Let's go, Clyde, giddy up, giddy up. And off they went further northward across the cow, cow pastures. Now the tracks were about to disappear into the woods, when suddenly the farmer's grim warning entered Clyde's mind, and Clyde the horse came to a staggering halt. Ho, ho, come now, scoffled Sir Gullivan. Don't tell me my high-stepping steed has turned into a chicken. <laughs> now, boys and girls, there is one thing for certain. You never, ever, 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 ever call a horse a chicken. You don't do that. Well, no, not, not even a coward such as Clyde. So snorting fiercely and angrily, <laughs> Clyde went charging into the woods despite the way he really felt. Now it was ever so quiet in the woods, not even the sound of a bird or a squirrel. Oh, there were with a clumpity clump of Clyde's great feet and the clankety clank of Sir Gullivan's armor. Soon they lost the monster's tracks because the brush became so dense, but it didn't matter. No. It didn't matter at all, for they could still follow the bones left by the monsters feasting. <laughs> Pretty soon, they heard a huffling, snuffling noise echoing through the pine trees like the sound of something gigantic breathing. The time has come, muttered Sir Gullivan, getting a good grip of his sword and clamping his visor shut. <coughs> and there it was, all at once, deep in the shadows of the woods, there it was, the great, big, giant, ugly, horrible, terrible, awful, awful, big, ugly... That's an auger? <coughs> have you ever seen an auger that looked like that? No. no. Have you? Have you? You've seen an auger that looks like that? How about you? You? You yeah. have? How about you? Back there? Anyone back there? You've seen an auger that looks like that? How about over there? Have you ever seen an auger that looks like that? Really? I did. I know. You? I have you? Yes. You too? Have you? No. <laughs> you? <laughs> yeah. The great hawking beast was sprawled with his back against an oak tree. He was sound asleep. What a sense, whispered the knight. The brute is far off in dreamland. Why, I could slit his skull in a twinkling. He'd never even know it. But that wouldn't be good sporting. No, that wouldn't be fair at all, would it, Clyde? And then to the horse's real horror and dismay, Sir Gullivant suddenly shouted, I'm guard! The monster reared up with an angry Who would dare to interrupt his sleep? And then the, the monster spied the knight on the horseback. Oh, this monster was always hungry enough for a great big white horse, especially one with a knight on his back. The, the, they both, the, the, they both the, the, the horse took off, leaping away, like, just like through the woods, over the boulders. Stop, 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 stop you little chicken liver, cowardly loud. But the worst of insults would not stop Clyde now. He was determined to save both their necks, whether his foolhardy master liked it or not. <laughs> Clyde, Clyde was way under the meadow before he slurred and slowed down and catch his breath. But when he turned around to make sure they weren't being followed, suddenly, suddenly he, he discovered... He, 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 he discovered that... His saddle was empty. Oh no, Sir Gullivant was gone. He must have taken a tumble back in the woods somewhere. The horse was more frantic than ever now. For all he knew, the, the horse, the, 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 the Sir Gullivant was back in the woods already being eaten up by that terrible, terrible monster. Yet he would never know for sure. He would never know for sure unless he went back in the woods to find out. And he's not that brave enough to do that. Remember, he's a coward. Remember? If there's even a slim chance of saving him, thought Clyde to himself, then I must do something. 
if I'm not here brave enough, then <laughs> I must pretend to be brave. <laughs> I know what I'll do. <laughs> I, I, I know what I'll do. <laughs> I'll pretend to be brave. And that's what he did. That's what he did, snorting fiercely, just like a high-spirited steed. <laughs> Clyde went charging back into the woods to find Sir Gullivan over the boulders, over the logs, through the woods he went. But when he reached the spot where he first met the monster, he was greeted by a great roaring laughter. <laughs> the monster was in a frolicsome mood. He was playing the old cat and mouse game. <laughs> the only problem was Sir Gullivant was the mouse. Even though he had no chance of winning the heroic night, but a furious fight, swinging away with a sword, but the monster kept leaping out with his great big turbo claws, but they both missed each other because Clyde the horse took a swerve to the left to avoid the turbo claws, and then the horse was off, off on a way to get away from the turbo monster. <laughs> but this, this time, the horse, you know what he did? What did he do? To get the monster's attention. Clyde suddenly sank his teeth in the blue scaly tail. The monster was much more surprised and hurt. He had never been bitten in the tail by anything before. And by now he forgot all about the night and took charging after the horse, just like the horse thought he would do. But this time Clyde, Clyde went taking off. This time Clyde, he, although he took off through the woods, he was, he was tired from his previous run and couldn't run as fast as before. And the monster was much faster than expected. Through the woods it went faster and faster and faster and suddenly the monster caught the horse with a tail! We didn't want that to happen, did we? No. No, we're on the horse's side, aren't we? Oh, no. Poor Clyde's been caught by the monster by the tail. Oh, no. Wait a minute, boys. and Hang on a second. It, it, it says here that would have been the end of poor Clyde if he hadn't reached the edge of the woods just in time. And, and with one desperate lunge, one tremendous surge of horsepower, Clyde made it into the meadow and actually hauled the monster out after him. What does this mean? Oh, I'll tell you what it means. Suddenly, it was the monster's turn to be terrified. He had been caught by surprise in broad daylight, with the sun glaring down at him. Now an owl died, Oxford and Ogre, who thrives in the darkness of the woods, cannot survive but five seconds of the broad daylight, and he knew it, and he let go of the horse and let out these terrible screeches and howls that could be heard all the way to Wickenham. And so